Hi everyone, it's Cake Talk. Welcome back. Oh, I gotta get my questions up. What was I thinking? Okay, um, how's everyone doing? I'm happy to be back. There they are. Okay, so um, let's just get right into this. Um, my first question is from Elisa Mosley. What do you do with all your cake scraps from your videos? I get this question a lot. Uh, nobody needs to worry. They do not go to waste ever. They, we eat them, which is me and my cameraman and my producers. I have family that I give it to, my mom and my sister and my husband and my son. And I have a lot of friends. So when the cakes are really big, all my friends have kids. So I'll call them and say, come by, get some cake. Or can I bring some cake to you? I'll give it to my neighbors. Everyone loves cake. Hardly anyone ever says no. Uh, so <laughs> don't worry. It does not go to waste. Uh, my next question is from Ben. What is the best way to color your cake batter? I made a white chocolate sponge that I wanted red so I could attempt to make your watermelon cake, but it just came out chocolate brown. Ooh, P.S. Love your videos make me want to try and get to your level. Good. I'm happy that I inspire you to cake more. Uh, the best way to become good at caking is by caking. So, uh, Ben, different batters color differently. When I color batter, I usually either color my vanilla cake or uh, I'll adapt a red velvet cake and color it. The tricky thing I think about your sponge is that it does have white chocolate in it and chocolate acts differently. Um, so it could be the chocolate that's throwing off the color. Uh, but really the only way to know is to try. I have colored cakes before that don't work out. That's why I always choose either my vanilla or my velvet, which are both up on my blog at howtocakeit.com. Um, my best tip for coloring red velvet in particular is if you're coloring it a dark color, like red or purple, you can leave the cocoa in the recipe because it will just darken that color. But if you're coloring it a light color like watermelon, which was pink, I completely remove any cocoa from the recipe because that, even if it's just a tablespoon of brown cocoa, it affects the color and you don't want that to happen. But my vanilla cake, I've colored almost every color now. In fact, I just recently baked a tie-dye cake and it came out great. So good luck. Check out my recipes, howtocakeit.com. So next up, Vanessa, will you be making some Halloween theme cakes? I love watching your videos. Woohoo! Exo from California. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, definitely. Halloween is big on my roster. And I actually already shot one Halloween video. And it's I'm actually concerned that it might be too scary. I will tell you it involves a part of the human body. And it's creepy. I hope you're gonna like it. I hope you're gonna like it. And um, okay, next, Fiona. Fiona, is there any substitute for fondant? Considering the fact that a lot of people don't like the taste of fondant, I I talk a lot about fondant in Cake Talk episode two. If you want to check it out, yes, a lot of people have a lot of concern for fondant, but here's the lowdown. Here's my personal lowdown on fondant. Fondant doesn't taste bad. I would not say it tastes bad, but fondant is very sweet and is an acquired taste, kind of like something that's very salty or very hot or very uh, um, sour. So fondant is very sweet. And that adds to your cake. But the truth is most people don't eat the fondant. Even if you get an iced cake, like I don't know if you've ever been to a birthday party where they have a nicely iced cake and at the end of the cake, there's so much frosting or so much icing. A lot of people, including me, leave that behind because it's just a lot and fondant is kind of the same thing. However, as a decorating medium, fondant cannot be beat. The only thing that works like fondant is marzipan. The issue there is it is made of nuts and a lot of people are allergic to nuts. And it doesn't color the same as fondant because it doesn't start off white, starts off an almond color. So you could just do so much with fondant as you've seen in my videos. 
you can make decorations and apply them. You can cover a whole cake. You can paint it. You can't do that to frosting and buttercream in the same way. Um, so that's just the long and the short of it. Fondant is an amazing decorating medium, medium. And yes, it is sweet. But the truth is most people don't eat it. And the other great thing about fondant is it... Uh, really protects your cake because when you make a decorated cake you're making it for a long time if you're not going to be done in you know 12 minutes like my video show you <laughs> it's hours and hours and hours and the fondant as well as having simple syrup in your cake really locks in the moisture of your cake so when your guests eat it it still tastes great to them like it's right out of the oven so um yeah i would say don't knock fondant try it and you'd be surprised, there are people who love fondant. My sister loves fondant. My sister can't wait to get to the fondant. One of my producers, Connie, loves fondant. So there are people who love fondant. They have super sweet, they have a super sweet tooth. Um, but I wouldn't say that it tastes bad. I wouldn't go that far. Um, okay, the next one is from Dania. Dania, I hope I'm saying your name right. It may seem like an odd question. But do you have back aches from all your standing you do coupled with the cutting and icing and decorating? I love you, by the way. Your passion is contagious. Thank you so much. And I just love seeing you enjoy what you do so, so much. Love from the Bahamas. Yes. Thank you. From the Bahamas. Uh, um, okay. So nobody's ever asked me this before. Um... I don't get as much back aches. I do get very tired feet. Sometimes I've had aches in my calves from standing a lot, and I do get wrist pain. And that, I think, is from icing and rolling and kneading. So I do get wrist pain. Um, but yeah, cakes are really heavy, and sometimes they're too heavy for me to lift, and in that case, I either get help from my husband, or sometimes I deliver them in parts and then put them together, especially if it's like a tiered cake. Um, but yeah, a lot of people do have back aches and be very careful when lifting a cake. When you start off, you never know how heavy it's gonna end up and they can be very, very heavy. Um, okay, next up would be, okay, what's next? Okay, okay. This is from, oh, I hope I say your name right. Sakisha, please, I'm really sorry if I said that wrong. This is from Sakisha. Oh, I have a question, smiley face. I noticed that for all of your cakes, you use all-purpose flour. Is it because of preference or the mechanical aspect of your carving, stacking, and designing with fun? I like the texture and flavor of all-purpose cakes better, but a lot of people like that box cake mix texture of cake flour. I love your videos. I can watch them again and again. Thank you. Um, yes, that is why I use all-purpose flour. The difference between flours would be the protein content. So cake flour has a lesser protein content than all-purpose, then bread flour has the highest. And then things like cornstarch come in because they have very little protein. So sometimes you see that in a cake batter or a cookie batter to sort of lighten it up. But yes, when you are stacking cakes, we're making the type of cakes I make that are carved and shaped and very heavy, the crumb of your cake matters dramatically. And I've also had a lot of comments saying, how come you always make chocolate cake or vanilla cake? Because I can't make a strawberry shortcake and shape it like a watermelon because it will fall apart. Fondant is heavy, buttercream is heavy, everything you do to it takes time so your cake sits out a lot so you can't be putting like whipped cream and fruit inside a cake like that which those are things I love and that's why I love making you know my mega cakes as we call them here on how to cake it like my uh, s'morio camp cake that's where I you see me using like different types of fillings and frostings and fruit and all kinds of things because I love those things in cake but they don't work when you're trying to carve a cake into the shape of something your structure is very, very important, and you would never want to do that much work and have your cake, A, fall apart, B, C. Sometimes, have you ever seen pictures of cakes where you can you can see where the layers are from the outside? Like through the fondant, you could kind of see that the filling is pushing out, and that's because 
the filling is either too soft or the cake is too heavy for the choice of filling. The inside of your cake definitely matters when you are stacking or carving and shaping cakes. It's very important. Okay, thanks for that question. Nobody has ever asked that question and it's very important. Okay, the next one. <laughs> okay, somebody just asked me. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Yolanda. Will you be making a Christmas cake? And that's from the Custard, Custard Slice Guy. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think there'll be a lot of Christmassy baking. I'm actually a huge Christmas baker for my family and friends. So, yes. I'm not sure what it is yet, but it will be there. Um, next question is from Yang Ren. How much difference does using simple syrup help? Love your videos and you're so talented in making cakes. Thank you very much, Yang. Um, simple syrup is, I mean, I am not the inventor of simple syrup. <laughs> when I worked in a bakery, we always used it. And it does make a difference because like I mentioned before, making decorated cakes takes a long time. So that simple syrup helps to lock in the moisture in your cake. It's not going to, you don't want to put so much on that your cake is saturated and soggy. You just want to shower your cake and that just gives extra moisture, locks it in. It doesn't change the flavor of your cake. And so it's really helpful. Sometimes you might notice when I make my mega cakes, I, I don't necessarily use simple syrup because if it's the type of cake that you can make and eat in one day, then that's a whole other story. But most of the cakes that I make that are decorated, the simple syrup really, really helps. And having a simple syrup bottle really helps. And you can now get that too on howtokickit.com. I had so many questions asking where I got that. They are pretty hard to find. Um, so yeah, check it out. Okay, so next, um, how do you, oh, this is from Elisa C. How do you bake your cakes so strong that they don't break when you, I think it's remove them. Do you have any tips? You are the best, love you so much, thank you. Um, yes, I, a lot of recipes say when you bake a cake, let it cool in the pan for like 10 to 15 minutes, then remove it and cool it on a rack. I am not a believer in this. I never do that. Uh, the reason for that is because obviously if you take the cake out of the metal, it will cool faster because metal keeps heat. But what I don't like about that is that it gives your cake a chance to sort of relax. And I don't want that. I want my cake to stay sturdy and in the exact same round or square shape that I baked. I let my cake cool 100% in the pan. 100%. In fact, if I'm going to carve that cake, I'll take it a step further and chill it in the pan before I remove it. Um, just so that I know it's definitely cold. And it just makes it that much easier for you. You don't have to worry about it breaking. It's more sturdy when you're carving, so it's not just crumbling as you're carving. That is my tip for not breaking your cakes. Um, okay. Next. I'm obsessed with your videos. What is the most complicated cake you've made? My cat is, this is from my cat is smarter than you. That cat probably is. Um, wow. Um, I made... I made a human heart, which I found really complicated because, well, I couldn't have a real model. Um, <laughs> so I found that complicated trying to do that from just a flat picture. I have I made a book cake, kind of like that stack of books you see behind me, but it was a lot of books. It was 12 books. So I had to replicate each cover and spine and all the different colors and use a lot of different techniques to do that. Um, so that took a very long time. It was also very heavy, so I had to assemble it on site, which is always nerve wracking. Uh, what else? I made so many, it's like I forget. After I finish this, I'll be like, oh yeah, that one. Uh, I made a basket of uh, ice wine grapes on a show of Sugar Stars that I was on, and I had to actually paint the cake to look like a basket on the outside. That was, that's one of my favorite cakes because it was really awesome. Uh, yeah, if I think of any more, I will get back to this question. Okay, so what is up next? Um, number eight. Oh, 
number eight question is from oh at trvp.taay on instagram when did you start baking and who taught you well i started baking uh young maybe around like eight nine i used to bake with my dad my dad was actually a baker when he was really young um yeah, and at first it was just baking, like, I want to make brownies, I want to make cookies, that kind of a thing. Um, and then after that, I'm pretty much self-taught. I did go to college to become a chef. I love food, I love eating it, but I actually love baking more than I love cooking. So I ended up getting a job in a bakery, and uh, it was great. I learned a lot working in a bakery. Um, my bakery that I worked in had different stations, so one person would just bake, one person would just um, take everything and watch everything and rotate everything in the oven, one person would just make fillings, one, two people would just ice cakes, like there was all different stations going on and I got to try them all out and guess what, I liked icing cakes the best, so I started to ice cakes and I became really good at it and fast at it, but the bakery didn't work with fondant at all and I knew I just wanted to do more. And that's when I started to make cakes on the side at home for my friends and my family. So pretty much I would tell you that I'm self-taught in baking. And with baking, you know, and cake decorating, practice is everything, especially with cake decorating. Practice is everything. And that's true for a lot of art forms. I don't think somebody just picks up a guitar. Sure, there are. The Jimi Hendrixes of the world, they pick up the guitar, they were made for it, but the more you play, the more you decorate cakes, the better you get. And the more confident you get, which is important. So, what's next? Okay. Hi, yo. Oh, it's from the Custer Slice guy. Again, hi, yo. It's me again. I was wondering in your last cake talk, you said something about going on your blog, howtogeekit.com, and typing how in how big your pan is, and then can tell you the exact amount of cake batter you need, but I cannot find it. Okay. So, yeah, it's not like a search engine. You don't type in the pan. What you do is you go, if you go to my recipes and click on a recipe, there's a chart where I give you like different uh, portion amounts of my batter and then there's also a chart of cake pan sizes round and square and rectangle where I tell you how much batter I bake in each pan. So how to kick it.com go to Yo's recipes and check it out. I hope it helps. Now okay. Hi Landa. Oh this is from Boring Old Me. Oh, you're not boring. This is a great question. Hi, Yolanda. I love your videos. I usually just watch them for fun. Will you be adding a new character like Bob the Minion? Listen, I loved, I love Bob. I really do. But he's lazy. So I don't think he's coming back to the How to Cake It Kitchen. He is pretty famous. You can see Bob everywhere. Just head to YouTube, type in Bob the Minion. He is all over the place so if you miss bob he is out there but he's not very helpful in the head of cake kitchen but i'm sure i will have some other interesting co-stars in the future on how to cake it okay so next let me see let me see oh this is from Tanishwa. i Tanishwa, you are here every time thank you so much and i hope i say your name right every time in your heart cake, do you use a cake mold or or you use something else? No, I use this and my knife and I carve, I always carve by hand. I never bake shaped cakes. Um, yeah, and that's what was so hard about it because I didn't have a human heart on hand that day. So I, <laughs> I just, looked at pictures and carved and felt like I was doing it wrong the entire time. And the audience that that was for were a group of crime writers. So they were really into like gore and I really wanted to impress them. And at the end of the day, they were impressed. They ate that heart cake. I couldn't believe it. And yeah, but that's what's so hard. And a lot of times when I make cakes, even on how to cake it, I feel like, 
is this going to work out? That's what's going on in my head if you want to know on how to kink it. <laughs> I, I feel like, is this going to work out? Because so many things, almost everything I've made on how to kink it other than books, I've never made before. So Walter, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to recreate create Walter, but having a model helps a lot. And if second best thing is a lot of detailed pictures of whatever you're making. Okay, so next question. This is from As Asnas Osumo. I hope I said your name right. I need, I need like a course on pronunciation. That's what I need to help me with this because I'm talking to everyone around the world and it's awesome. Um, okay, what is your favorite thing to cook? Wow! Um, you know what my favorite thing to cook is? Watching my husband cook me pasta. Does that count as an answer? That is my favorite thing <laughs> to cook. Yeah, I don't know. I think because I spend so much time baking, I never, I just want to eat. I don't want to cook it. I just want food there. So when it's me, I tend to make something like, uh, if it's only me and I have no help, I tend to make something like a salad because I feel like I could just take a bunch of things and throw them together and it's different every time. And I'm, I I can make a mean salad dressing. So uh, it would be a salad, although that's technically not cooking. But I can assure you, I love doing Next up, um, do, oh, this is a great question from... You know, I, it's like I pick people with names I can't pronounce on purpose. Um, this is from Balake Mok. I hope that's right. Do things ever go wrong when you're making a how to cake it video? If any, what has been the most memorable? I love you. I love you too. Um, yeah, sometimes things don't work out the way I think they would. And like I said, I'm doing everything for the first time. Uh, the... The first example that comes to mind would be in the s'morio camp cake. When I when I filled the first layer and I put on the seven minute frosting, I wanted it to be really marshmallowy, so I put a lot. And then when I put on the next cake layer, as I mentioned before, cake is heavy, and seven minute frosting is not like buttercream. It's really billowy, so it started to billow out of the cake more than I had planned for, and I felt like. I was in an I Love Lucy episode and I was Lucy, so I just, but it's like I have to go with the flow, so I just wiped it away and made that part of the decoration and it's it's not a big deal, don't sweat it. Uh, and I think that's why I love making mega cakes because I can just go with the flow, whereas when I do sculpted cakes, I can't. It's very important that I follow all the steps and get them right, so yeah. Things go wrong. Also, there's other people in my kitchen with me who you don't see, but you hear. You hear them laughing. Um, and so there's, you know, it's hotter in my kitchen. There are lights on me. That adds extra heat. Heat is not always my best friend when I'm decorating cakes. So there are a lot of factors that play into cake decorating that are not really, you know, I don't really talk about on the show. But sometimes, yeah, we need to stop and take a break and let it cool down or open a window or do whatever we have to do so that, you know, I'm not featuring melted cake. Okay, next question. This is from Tamara Malant. Do you prefer baking over cooking? Yep, totally. I just, I just said that a moment ago. Totally, totally. But I do love food. I have a deep appreciation and love for food. Um, I think food is an important part of life. Um, it brings conversation and you eat it with people that you love. Uh, and I'm very fortunate to be from a part of a world where food is abundant. And I don't take that lightly. Uh, so I love food. I don't love preparing it for myself. <laughs> but I love eating it. Um, okay. Okay. This is from Brenda Tangwe. You must buy all your ingredients in bulk. Where do you buy from? Ah, uh, true and false. I don't buy all of my ingredients in bulk. Um, for example, butter. I should. Uh, butter, flour, sugar. I don't. I buy the packaged uh, variety of those. Sometimes I buy bulk things like some of the candy I've used 
or chocolate chips because every cake I make is so different. Sometimes I only need, you know, chocolate chips for that cake or candy for that cake. So in that case, I do buy bulk. Um, okay, I'm saying I'm a lot. I'm really trying not to do that. I'm also trying to look at the camera instead of look at myself because I don't realize that when you're watching me, it's like I'm looking down and I don't mean to do that. Um, okay. Wow, this is a great question from Boring Old Me again. What was the best baking experience and what was the worst baking experience you've ever had? Well, I've had a lot of great baking experiences because I love a transformation, so I love to see my cakes go from ingredients to objects. So the book cake I mentioned earlier and the barrel of wine I mentioned and the heart and also some upcoming great things you're gonna see on how to cake it. Um, a lot, most of the cakes on How to Cake It have been my best experiences because I make what I want to make. I make what you guys tell me you want to see. Um, we film for a very long time. You don't know that, but we film about 14 hours. So I do get a lot of comments that I look tired, and it's because I am tired. So um, it's, but it's very rewarding for me to get to the end of that day and to see what I've made. So that to me is the pinnacle. And now, usually when I make cakes, it's only like my client who sees it. And I always loved their reaction. That was always my favorite part. But now I literally have, you know, thousands of you out there giving me your reaction, which is so amazing. I can't believe that you take the time to watch me do what I love and what I've loved to do for so long. So thank you worst baking experience. I made a cake. I just spoke about this last night. Um, I made a cake for a bat mitzvah years ago. It was beautiful. It was two shoe boxes and a shopping bag. And it had the girl's name on it with a polka dot pattern. And I made tissue paper out of gum paste. So there was tissue paper coming out of the bag. It was so cute. What 13 year old girl would not want this cake? So what happened was I actually had to deliver it early because I couldn't deliver it at the time of the party and my client, I didn't want to do it because I don't like, here's a tip, don't hand your cakes to other people. Other people don't know how long you spent on your cake and so no, it's like your baby. Think about it like your baby. You don't just hand your baby over to someone you don't know, right? So. But I agreed and she met me at the venue. So she, my client saw my cake in perfect condition. And the chef at the venue, which was a restaurant that no longer exists, um, he promised that he would leave it in his fridge. He actually let me put it in the fridge where I wanted to put it, keep it safe for the, you know, it was like four hours before the party began. Long story short, he lied. He took it out of the fridge because he needed fridge space and it was here in June, um, very hot day in June. It was about 31 degrees outside and probably over 40 degrees in this kitchen. And so he put it on a cart and put it to the side and forgot about my cake that I had spent days on. And the cake looked like somebody boiled a kettle and poured it on the cake. The cake was so melted that the gum paste was melted. Do you know what it takes to melt gum paste? The gum paste was melted. Her name on the bag, which was like in beautiful black writing, was dripping. Her name was dripping like, uh, like a horror film logo down. The, it was awful. And I felt awful, but it was clearly melted. That was obvious. So I didn't get in trouble, um, but I, I still think about it. I still think about it. It just really bothers me that somebody could, I don't like when people don't keep their word and I don't like that he could just take for granted how long that took me. Not only that, his venue was responsible for the party, so that's what he should have been. Okay, so, oh, okay, this is my last, last question. Hey, Yolanda, how are you, mate? Oh, Australia. This is from Faye D, by the way. Greetings from Australia. I'm watching you instead of doing my 2,000 word essay due tomorrow. Faye, I've been there. I procrastinated at essays. I'll admit it. 
I love your videos and your cakes are so flawless and creative. You are an amazing cake artist, but have you ever had a cake disaster? Oh, well, Faye, I hope you were listening because I just explained my cake disaster. That was it. Um, but yeah, thank you for writing from Australia. Okay, so I think I have to wrap up. Yes. Should I do one more, one more quick one? Um, okay, let me think of a good one. This is from Priya. Oh, I went to school with a girl named Priya. Do you have a very good chocolate cake recipe? Yes, I do. And it's amazing, especially for sculpting cakes. This is my favorite recipe. I've been using it for like 15 years. Um, it bakes really well, large and small. Please go to howtocakeit.com, go to Yo's Recipes. It's called Yo-Yo's Chocolate Cake. There's uh, a chart of different portions, and there's a chart of how you can make it in your pans. Check it out. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Yeah, and this is thank you, Priya, and thank you, everyone, for coming. This is Cake Talk. I will see you again the next Cake Talk. What's today? September 10th? Yeah, so the next Cake Talk will be September 24th, and I will see you all again